Both AMD and NVIDIA had their CES keynotes today, and I've got to say, once again, comparatively, at least to watch, NVIDIA released almost a complete snooze fest. I had to fight myself to stay awake through parts of it, but I did definitely wake up when it seemed like Jensen Wang bragged about having a date. What wine goes well with that? Nobu's head sommelier recommends a crisp white wine like a Sauvignon Blanc with black cod miso. There is availability for a party of two at 7.30 p.m. Can you respond to Jensen to let him know to meet us there tomorrow? Okay, sending. But besides having a few laughs and taking a shot every time I heard that Jeff Bezos knockoff say tie. 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 It's got a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti in this thing. The 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti. Ti in this thing. I really don't have much to say about NVIDIA's press conference. I'm going to get that out of the way now. They announced the 3090 Ti. It will be 7 to 9% stronger than the 3090. And this is being launched so that NVIDIA can say they have the performance crown. Still, they do not like it when websites occasionally use the 6900 XT or certainly the 6900 XTX Liquid as their CPU benchmarking GPU. They want to say they firmly have the performance crown and they're willing to have something use 450 watts to do it. It's really not a practical GPU, but it doesn't matter because I've been told for a while now this is going to be a paper launch anyways. NVIDIA is launching this to say they have the strongest card, and that's really all you need to know. It's not practical. It doesn't make sense to buy over anything else because it's probably going to cost more. That's all there is to say about the 3090 Ti, and I've about as much to say as NVIDIA did as they glanced over it in about five seconds. Outside of that, of course, NVIDIA also announced the RTX 3050 8 gigabyte. that is... Less teraflops than I thought they might give it on desktop, actually. This 3050 doesn't look that strong to me, and I actually think Navi24 and Intel Arc are going to have no problem competing with this. Besides that, though, I just need to emphasize this about NVIDIA's conference. Notice they're bringing their low-end die to desktop. Notice that the laptop card they focused on is a 175-watt monster that will keep the mobile performance crown. They're focusing on the top end, top power, not top efficiency, and it's because they know they can't. Straight up, NVIDIA can't compete with AMD's efficiency this year, and they know it. And they know that the only market share they're likely to easily keep is the enthusiast gamer one. That's why they're moving a laptop GPU to desktop all of a sudden, because they know they might not ship as many of them to laptop OEMs anymore in a world where Arc and Navi24 just have efficiency that makes it so NVIDIA can't compete with them. That is what is key to keep in the back of your mind as I start talking about AMD's announcements today. You see, AMD's had an efficiency advantage, but that advantage is about to get a shot in the arm, and that is a thing that I don't see how NVIDIA can really compete with it. And let me tell you why. So this chart in the lower left-hand corner of the screen was derived from my Navi24 leak, where I charted relative performance, if it was just based on bandwidth and teraflops, which isn't perfect, but you know, just to give you an idea, and then relative performance, it was just based on TDP. This puts things in perspective, and now let me update it with the, I believe, official numbers of the newest cards that were announced by AMD and NVIDIA today, Navi24 and GA107, although some of the NVIDIA specs are still somewhat up in the air, it seems, so keep in mind that one of these could be a little off, but anyways, here's the point, right? If you look at this, literally, like, AMD's performance with RDNA2 scales fairly linearly with TDP, like, go look at the charts, you will see that relative to the 6900 XT's TDP, whatever the TDP of a lower RDNA2 card is, it's pretty close to what it would be just based on TDP alone. And most of this was based on 7 nanometer. You see, when NVIDIA gets above GA104, their most efficient die that's actually competitive with RDNA2 efficiency, they, their efficiency just goes out the window the bigger the die gets. And then even the smaller the die gets, it doesn't actually improve it. It typically gets slightly worse as well. NVIDIA was already struggling to line up a GA104 die with a smaller Navi22 die and a 107 die with well, eventually Navi24. Well, now AMD is refreshing their products on 6 nanometer. And this extra boost is all that I think it takes for it to become an entire tier's difference in competition. And that makes a huge difference in what laptops this can go into for OEMs, how much it costs them to make them. 
AMD's main advantage in the first half of this year, yes, they'll have stronger products, but it's the fact that their products are using so much less energy than their competition in a cycle of massive laptop refreshes that I think is their major asset here. NVIDIA knows this. That's why they're focusing on high-end laptops. They can't compete in the low end, not even with Intel's Arc. And in fact, if you look at Intel's presentation today, they really didn't talk about per power consumption at all, which is weird for Intel and laptops. They focused it on performance. And that's because I believe they know AMD has a massive efficiency advantage with Rembrandt again. Gamers like to focus on pure performance, and I get it. It is the most fun thing to look at. Look at the much higher number on this one thing that I use all the time compared to the previous one. But really, that's not the point of Rembrandt. The first thing I'm going to talk about that AMD announced today, a Zen 3 Plus 6 nanometer RDNA 2 APU with still only around a 200 millimeter square die size, something smaller than their original Zen 1 APUs. Guys, this isn't that big. This isn't that powerful for a 2022 APU. It's 2022. The latest consoles launched in 2020, and they cost 500 or arguably for the PS4 discless, $400. They don't need FSR to barely game in 1080p low. I, I honestly think it's a bit disingenuous to say Rembrandt is capable of AAA gaming. It's not unfair to say it can play all games. All right, playable settings. But 1080 below with FSR on, <laughs> that's not AAA enthusiast gaming, guys. That's not to say that I don't like Rembrandt. I do. It's just to say that adding more performance in and of itself with Rembrandt, well, that's not really a surprise. It's a 2022 APU. It should be way stronger than the 7 nanometer Vega-based APUs they've been making for years. It's to say that... The reason it's impressive is not its performance. It's that they're bringing this much more performance at a lower power consumption than before that I believe is going to make it hard for NVIDIA to hold low-end laptops. And I want to talk about that and why I think it's going to be hard for NVIDIA to compete with the 6000 S-Series and, of course, with about Zen 4 and Zen 3D. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Vite Ramen. For 2022, give yourself the gift of an easy-to-make-at-home meal that's healthy, reasonably priced, and above all else, actually tasty so that you actually do eat a healthy meal. I eat it all the time, and it really tastes fantastic. It's so easy to either eat a packet by itself as a lunch, or you can put a couple of eggs in there while it's boiling, and, well, you can then have a hearty meal at the end of the day. Click the link in the description and use the offer code BROKENSILICON to save 10% off a special bundle just for Moore's Law Z fans that includes spoon, chopsticks, and more. This is a great deal for you, and it really does help the channel tremendously. Seriously, I eat it. It's good. They've been supporting Moore's Law's Dead for months, and you buying their products supports me. And you know what? You really should try to if you want a healthy and tasty snack to start out this year and maybe get rid of some of that holiday weight. Buy Vite Ramen today. I actually think this slide here is the perfect illustration of the predicament NVIDIA's in in the first half of this year when it comes to laptop, at least competing technologically with AMD. I'm not talking about Mindshare. So the 6500M, based on Navi 24, is 200% faster than the MX450. That's triple the performance, guys. The MX550 NVIDIA is about to launch is based on the same die as the 450. It won't even be twice as strong. I know NVIDIA has top performance. I know the 3080 Ti laptops will be the strongest laptops. But most people aren't buying $2,500 plus laptops. Most people are getting laptops with 25, 35, and 65 watt GPUs. And GPU to GPU, and AMD is basically a full die advantage <laughs> in terms of what the performance will be, right? I don't know how you convince OEMs to use an MX550 when it's going to probably be the same performance as Rembrandt. Well, using as much energy as Rembrandt by itself, if not more. 
You know, this move to 6 nanometer isn't even a half node upgrade from 7 nanometer, but it's just enough, I believe, to give AMD such an efficiency advantage over NVIDIA that I don't think these new products like an RTX 2050 and an MX 550 and 570 will be enough to stave off Rembrandt and Navi 24. Yeah, all of these products from NVIDIA for laptop and AMD for laptop that I've been talking about in this video, I'm aware I'm kind of jumping all over the place and going back and forth between them. And I apologize if that's confusing, but the reason this video is kind of organized in a somewhat schizophrenic way is that I simply think it all is painting to a uniform picture. That picture is that, well, I may have explained why NVIDIA is launching the products they are, the you know, like the 2050 and the MX570. That doesn't mean I agree it will work. As far as I can tell, NVIDIA's new products are competing with a tier below what they should be based on TDP. And TDP in laptop means performance. AMD's got a real advantage here, seemingly even against Intel's Alder Lake Mobile, because Intel isn't really talking about efficiency so much with laptops. So I almost see Intel as just a better position than NVIDIA in that they can bundle their efficient art cards with their uh, Alder Lake CPUs, but those Autolake CPUs are really going to be more about top performance. Rembrandt seems to just be crazy efficient. And that's mostly what I have to say about Rembrandt in the new 6 nanometer GPUs AMD is launching. At the end of the day, they will sell if they make enough of them. And I have been told they're going to make a ton of Navi 24 GPUs and Rembrandt, but they just have to actually do it. You know, and, and and making more than before, like they did with RDNA 2, didn't cut it because NVIDIA made even more than they did than before. AMD needs to focus on this advantage. At a certain point, it just, while well, I was watching AMD's presentation, I just went, yep, that'll win. Make enough of them. And so that's the final thing I want to say about those. But I guess I should touch on the 6500 XT a little bit. It's $200. That's basically the price I expected. I thought maybe they'd go for $180 or $190. They didn't really need to, though. And I do know that they were considering $250. So consider that if you think $200 for what is basically a 4 gigabyte RX 590 in 1080p or lower only probably. They were considering charging more. And the fact that they didn't should tell you something. I know all of these companies want you to believe that the shortages will never end. And so you should. Well, why would they tell you that? They're telling you that because they want you to just put up with these prices and buy them. The fact is, AMD knows that shortages are probably going to get a lot better in the next couple of quarters. That they can't afford to have a $250 4 gigabyte card. NVIDIA knows that as well. And that's why they're giving the 3050 8 gigabytes. And I think Navi will do just fine against the 3050. I really don't have much to say. But let's move away from the products that include GPUs in them to the products that only have CPUs in them. Today, AMD announced the 5800X3D, which, first of all, I love the name. I was hoping they just throw 3D at the end of it unless they're going to do a full lineup from top to bottom. If they were going to do a full lineup, mostly with vCache and overclocked models, then I thought they should just call it the 6000 series. But this is coming out in the spring, a little later than even I expected, and it seems to only be one model. And I think it will be, actually. It's I, I actually do think this is just one vCache model because they also showed off Zen 4 at all core 5 gigahertz, 5 nanometers gaming next to it. Why would you show off this flagship product coming out at the end of this year if you haven't even put on sale your new flagship? It's because it's a temporary flagship, and it's just one. They're not going to do a full lineup. They're not going to do a full release. They'd rather send most of their Vcash yields to Milan X because it's just so much more important. It's not just about short-term profits either, that they can make more money off of Epic products than they can the consumer ones. It's, it's about the fact that once you take server market share, it becomes entrenched far easier than any market share you take from consumers. And so it's important for AMD when they have this insane advantage with Milanix to ship as many of those as possible because that will mean those customers will likely upgrade to Zen 5, Zen 6, and so on and so forth down the line. Consumers will just upgrade to the latest thing. So that's what they're doing. In fact, it makes more sense when you consider that AMD probably wasn't even going to take the performance crown in gaming from Alder Lake anyways, especially not with a 5.5 gigahertz 12900KS coming out soon. AMD is not going to beat them in gaming performance. They're not really going to beat them in multi-threading performance either. So why would they launch a Vcash model that makes less money than their Milanix? This is why you're seeing just the 8-core launch. This is a temporary stopgap for gamers to not switch to Alder Lake if all they want to do is game, to not get the i5, to just wait and upgrade to this. 
And then they're showing you Zen 4. They're saying, if you're the true enthusiast, maybe someone like me that got a 3950X the month it came out, they're saying, don't get Alder Lake or think about Raptor Lake. Think about Zen 4. Hold on tight with your 5950X. We have Zen 4 coming, but we're not going to launch a 59X 3D. That's what AMD telegraphed today, that they've just decided it's not worth fully competing with Alder Lake that they don't need to, that they just need to release a few things that AM4 customers can upgrade to and that everyone else should just wait for Zen 4. And that's gonna just about do it for today's video. If you look at the things AMD is announcing right now, they're telegraphing a couple of things. All of their advantages in the first half of this year, and they have a lot of them, are due to their six nanometer efficiency, something that I think Nvidia is going to have a very hard time competing in in low-end laptop. But only if AMD actually ships enough products to take market share. That's the key. AMD, we get it. You have something that will be competitive with the 3050 and desktop and cost less. All right, ship enough of them so it holds MSRP. You have an APU that I think is going to be far more efficient against Alder Lake Mobile than a lot of people are expecting. And you can bundle it with six nanometer GPUs that nobody but Intel can compete with. And Intel's launching ARC after your six nanometer GPUs. Actually ship enough products and take market share. And the only other thing is AMD is also telegraphing that they're really not going for performance crowns in the first half of this year. That's for the end of 2022 with Zen 4 and the product that I was told they considered showing but clearly didn't yet today, RDNA. Three. But I will talk about RDNA 3 and Intel CES keynotes in upcoming videos. Not this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Do not miss the upcoming content, including a delayed broken silicon, so me and Dan can fully discuss all of today's news. Make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law Z YouTube channel, that you have the bell button wrong, that you subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app. Give us a review if you can. Also, please remember to support our sponsors like Fight Ramen. And, well, the biggest thing you can do to support us is definitely by supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get that broken silk I mentioned early and ad free and you'll get the entire catalog of dye shrinks that only come to patrons the ability to ask me and guest questions to talk about these live shows right now on the discord there's a whole community waiting for you there but otherwise to everyone else no matter what thank you for watching